welcome to our coffee hour for August. Uh, this morning, we've got Abby Gray with the Colorado Association of Conservation Districts here to introduce their new watershed technician. So I'm just going to hand it straight over to Abby. All right. Thank you, Garth. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for today's coffee hour. Um, for those of you I haven't met, my name is Abby Gray. I'm the executive director of the Colorado Association of Conservation Districts. Um, and CACD has some exciting news. I hope that everybody has seen the emails come out about our new watershed technicians. Um, and in some areas of the state, I hope you were able to meet both Fayana and Kaylee or Kelly. Gosh, Kelly, I'm sorry. Um, so I just want to give a little introduction and background into um, the watershed technicians. And then I'm going to let Kelly and Fayana tell you a little bit about their role um, in the watersheds for you guys and how they're out there to help help you through projects and things like that. So um, Callie Payne is our Southern Region um, Watershed Technician and she serves both the upper and lower Arkansas watersheds as well as the San Juan and the Rio Grande. So, so she's down in the Southern part of the state. I hope everybody down there was able to meet her. She started with us in June. Um, so we're really excited to have her. She comes from an extensive agricultural background um, and has worked with some of our partner organizations. So she's very well versed in agriculture um, and she is ready to start serving the conservation districts. Um, and then most recently we've added Fianna Seeley, which I'm sure many of you know Fianna from the White River Douglas Creek Conservation Districts. Um, and she is serving the Western Slope of Colorado. So she'll be serving the Colorado watershed as well as the North Platte, Yampa, um, and the Gunnison Dolores watershed. So she's on the Western Slope and she started with us um, late July. So she's just getting onboarded at this point in time. Um, and we hope that this fall at the watershed meetings, you're able to shake hands and get to know both Fianna and Callie um, in their respected areas. We are going to be advertising our Eastern um, part of the state watershed technician position again this month. We have not filled that one just yet. So. Keep your eyes and ears posted for announcements on that in the coming future. And um, with that, I'm going to hand it over to Callie to go ahead and get started with um, introducing herself and the positions to you guys. Great. Thanks, Abby. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for the introduction. Um, we're really excited to be here and uh, working for such a great organization and helping with conservation projects in Colorado. I'm going to try to share my screen. We'll see how this... Oh. Can you? Oh, there we go. Can you see that? Okay. That looks great. So I wanted to start out by kind of laying the foundation of these new jobs. Um, most of you here are are familiar, but I just wanted to kind of go through um, the whole picture. And I like to start with why and the purpose of CACD, the purpose of the watershed associations, and then um, the purpose of our positions. So as most of you know, CACD is the state association that assists the conservation districts with education and outreach and acts as their voice at the Capitol. And that's one of the things that sets us apart from CSCB is lobbying at the Capitol. So the watershed associations, the CACD works for the conservation districts and those are grouped into 10 geographical regions known as the watersheds, the watershed associations. Before I dive too far into the needs of the watershed associations, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, what the purpose of the watershed associations are as I've started this new job. Uh, as Abby mentioned, I just started in June. Um, I've been getting a lot of different um, answers and feedback as to what the watershed associations are there for and the purpose. So before we talk a little bit about the purpose, um, 
I would love to hear your guys' interpretation of the purpose of the watershed associations so that we can have a little more interactive conversation about this. So on the next screen, if you go to, you can either do the QR code in the corner, if you guys can all see that, or if you go to slido.com, I can tell you the code to put in. If you put in slido.com, at the very top, there is a blue box that says, um, join as a participant. And I can, so you don't have to switch screens. If it's easier, I can tell you the number to put in there. And then once you're in there, you can uh, answer whatever you think the purpose is, or you want the purpose to be, or what you think is currently um, what's going on with the watersheds. But that number is 56798298. And I'll give you guys a little bit to put whatever answer you think, however many answers you want. If anybody has trouble, let me know. I'll give you guys another minute and then we can have a discussion about this. Okay, so exactly, a lot of great answers and you guys really hit the nail on the head. Um, there's a lot of answers that were um, working as a collaborative group, um, being able to work together and bring the needs forward, which is definitely a benefit. So. I stole this from the CSCB website uh, and just kind of wanted to go through the all of the watershed association purposes. So the first one is a forum for communication, um, doing educational programs and providing information on new conservation programming sharing information on programs and events between all the conservation districts, being a clearinghouse for watershed association concerns, and providing a unified voice through a resolution process to positively impact conservation and natural resource issues in Colorado. And also, as you guys are all aware, nominations forward for the annual meeting.
So circling back, we went through the purpose of CACD, the purpose of the watershed associations. And so now I wanted to dive into the needs of those watershed associations. So um, the water, some watershed associations are much more active than others. We'd like to give everybody an opportunity to carry out great conservation projects for their communities. And in order to do that, it seemed like the need was funding and capacity for project planning and implementation. So to kind of dive into that, the three kind of pillars of what our, the purpose of our jobs are is planning for projects and implementation of those projects, grant writing and management, and then producer outreach. So the solution was to provide, to create these positions. Thank you, Abby. <laughs> and to try to help with that and even the playing field and allow us to really provide each watershed, each conservation district, an ability to carry out the really cool and innovative projects that they want to do. So, I excuse the um, not wonderful lines there. It took me a little way too long to do this, but I tried to lay out for you where our, each of our regions are. Um, so if you want to screenshot this to get our information, um, we can also send these out, I'm sure, as well. But um, if you want our email and phone numbers and be able to kind of look at a visual map of where each of us has our territory. Um, as Abby mentioned, mine is the Southern region and includes the San Juan, the Rio Grande, and the upper and lower Arkansas. If you'd like to take would it you away. Like to run with it. Okay. Can you hear me okay? So some of you may know me through the White River and Douglas Creek Conservation Districts, and I'm very excited about this new position with a little bit of background in the districts. Hopefully that will be able to propel me forward to help those districts in need of some capacity or information on grant funding and help writing and help with managing that. My area is considered more of the Northwest, as you can see. Um, obviously, I'm familiar with the White River and Douglas Creek. I grew up in this area around me. Um, I've worked closely with Colorado First. Um, I'm looking forward to the others in that area. And then down south, I was in the Delta Montrose area for approximately 30 years before I came back to Meeker. So I'm familiar with some of the people down there also. I'm looking forward to everybody reaching out to me and any questions that they have in that and meeting people at their watershed meetings. We still have a couple of them to get scheduled that we'll work on. But my area is gonna cover the North Platte, White, Yampa, the Colorado, and the Gunnison, Dolores. So obviously the Northwest and a little bit South there, completely different regions as far as landscape. So I think the projects are gonna be quite different. The grants that we have done here through the districts at White River and Douglas Creek have ranged in water, a couple of different water type grants, including some major infrastructure and irrigation ditches. So I'm familiar with that. And then along with range projects that are from vegetation management to range monitoring, which is a huge one in our um, more desert country down on, in the Piantric area. And then also just some capacity ones that have helped in our matching grants through CSCB. Um, we have a huge forestry project that is getting kicked off with a coordinator that got hired. I believe she came in the middle of March, if I remember correctly. So a lot of things happening in these districts that I hope in turn is going to help me with my current position at CACD to help answer questions or find the funding that people are looking for. So. And I'm open to questions anytime. If I don't have the answer, we as a team will find them. Perfect, thank you. And as Abby mentioned, our third position will be in this territory. Um, 
we are working on finding that person. They'll be responsible for the upper and lower South Platte and the Republican watersheds. So one of our first pillars that I talked about was project planning and implementation. Um, one of the things that we will be responsible for is helping develop plans for watershed conservation projects and conducting assessments to identify priorities and potential project areas. Um, really helping to bolster, as you guys all said, the purpose of the watershed associations to collaborate, to tackle more widespread effective impact and bigger projects. And also to help develop templates and toolkits for brochures, workshops, social media, community and landowner education. I've noticed, so when I first started in this job, one of the first things that I did was to kind of do a deep dive into all the districts within the watershed and um, look at their long range plans and the things that their, their websites and the things that they're doing throughout their districts and creating kind of a, big picture of, of what that meant for the watershed and their priorities. And it seems like, to no surprise, a, a lot of within the districts, there's so many duplicate um, goals. Most of the districts want to do workshops and want to do landowner education. So our goal is to try to help all of the districts and the watersheds do that as easily as possible. And if everybody's trying to do the same thing, why not help by creating templates and toolkits to make that a smoother process for everybody. Um, and then also helping districts and the watersheds complete their long range goals. So do you guys have, I guess we can stop for a second. If you guys have any questions on this part in particular, or any suggestions or, or comments, we would love to hear that. If not so far, I can continue, but. Okay. Our second kind of pillar is the grant writing and management, um, helping to prepare and submit grant applications to secure funding for all of these great projects and initiatives, uh, staying informed about the available grants and opportunities, overseeing the management of those grants, and then helping with compliance for requirements and reporting on those grants. A lot of districts and watersheds are so variable. Some are already doing this very well, and we don't want to take away from that at all, but anything that we can help with, there are other districts and watersheds that just don't have the capacity for that. So that's where we really want to help in any way that we can for any district and watershed. The grants that CACD has, just as a reminder, there's three grants that CACD provides. One is the Education and Outreach Grant, which is um, you are able to apply for up to $4,000. The match is 50-50. And this is really any topics program um, for annual meeting and watershed association meetings. Uh, similarly, the speakership program grant is related to bringing in speakers for programs for the annual meetings. Abby, do you want to say anything more about these two or anything I'm missing? No, well, I think you did a great job, Callie. Um, I hope most of you at this point are familiar with the education outreach and speakership grants. But um, like Callie said, the education and outreach grant is really intended to help get programs on the ground, whether that be a one day landowner education event or a series of events, um, or if you're print printing materials, flyers, newsletters, things like that, that are outreach directly to your landowners about the conservation district. That is the intention behind that first half of the grant. And then the speakership program grant is to bring in the outside speakers. 
Um, the only thing I'll add is that the um, $4,000 cap applies to both programs as well as the one-to-one -one match. Thanks. And then the third grant that we have is the demonstration grant. All districts are eligible to apply for up to $10,000. And this one is a little bit different than the other two and then it's a 75-25 match. And the 25% match will, it will allow for in-kind sources. And these demonstration grants, I'm sure this is not new, you guys have heard of these before, but um, just wanted to make sure that we threw that in there. Um, this is a great tool to utilize if you guys are interested in trying projects that you that sound interesting and think that you could have an effect, a uh, positive effect on. Um, the topics are soil health, plant health, water quality and quantity, invasive weeds, helping with the STAR program, um, conservation efforts that are that are not already being done in your area, but seem like might be a good idea or enhancements to projects that are already happening. Um, drones, invisible fencing and collaring projects, rangeland and grazing projects and livestock management. These are not, not limited to these topics, but most of the focus is on these. Abby, do you wanna say anything else about the demonstration grants? No, you did a great job, Kim. Okay, so the third pillar that we talked about was the outreach and education. So our goal is to help deliver educational programs to raise awareness about watershed conservation and help collaborate with community stakeholders and create a more defined identity for your watershed to help increase awareness and recognition in your communities. So um, at the end of the day, we're here to help all of you. Um, and we want to make that as easy as possible and learn from you guys what is the most, what would help us utilize, for you to utilize us in the most effective way. Um, so we have a survey here. If you want to click on that and save it, you don't have to do it right now, but, um, and we can also send this around. But just to get a little bit more feedback on the ways that we can communicate best to all of you and provide programming that makes the most sense and will be the most effective and helpful for you guys. Um, so with that, that's the end of the presentation that I had, but I'd love to have some more discussion on what you guys, the questions you have for us, um, what you guys might need help with or um, anything that we can do to help make the watershed associations the most effective. Thanks, Callie. Um, I'm sure that with there being overlapping field staff between the State Conservation Board and CACD, there's probably a, some confusion or questions. Does anybody have any questions that have come up for them as they've heard us announce watershed technicians just wondering how those positions will work or does anybody have any ideas on how um, how they'd like to see the watershed technicians help them in their watershed? Do you guys have ideas in the back burner? Quiet group this morning. I do have a quick question about the grants. Mm -hmm. Yes, go ahead. Um, so the CACD grants that we just walked through, I know are open to the districts. Are there grants that are better suited for the watershed as a whole to apply to that we're aware of? Or is that a goal that we're looking towards? Or is it more we want to help the districts themselves find and coordinate grants? That's an excellent question. The answer to it is the purpose of the watershed technicians is to work um, with the watershed as a whole. Our goal is to try to help the watershed move forward projects um, as a collaborative and apply for grants as a collaborative. Um, however, if there are districts within a watershed that are 
looking at a district-based project and really just missing that capacity piece, we encourage you to reach out to your watershed technicians um, and talk to them because there are ways that we can help support that. Um, but the real goal behind these positions was to encourage the um, capacity of the watersheds in general. I think just help and support on like how to do resolutions is good, kind of your basic operations. I know that I'm the district manager for three of the seven in our watershed. So when it comes to a watershed meeting, I tend to organize and get one board and hunt down minutes from the treasurer and try to get a hold of the president and try to track down who's the vice president. So just somebody to kind of do that so it's not landing on one district manager in the watershed, um, I think would be helpful in just organizing and helping us know what, what to do at watershed meetings. That's excellent. Um, Emily, thank you so much for that feedback. I think that's another piece that um, we, we didn't specifically speak to is the resolution process and the awards process just providing you guys somebody as a direct contact that understands how those work and can help you through the forms or help you if you have questions between policy um, and action items and things like that. So they will serve as those resources for you guys. I am always a resource for you if you have any questions about resolutions. Um, if there needs to be workshops, if I know that's something that um, we've been trying to get ahead of the resolution process, so it's not all happening in the fall. We're starting to talk about resolutions and awards and things like that in our spring watershed meetings. Um, so maybe if there, there's a need for some workshopping in the spring, we'd be happy to look into doing that and providing that for you guys. Absolutely. Well, you guys are a quiet group this morning. Are there any other questions that come to mind about how folks are gonna be working or um, questions about the positions? I will just um, preemptively say that these positions are brand new. So we have a theology behind why we brought um, Callie and uh, Fayana into the picture. And we have an idea of what we think that they can do to help support the watersheds, but it's all theory at the moment. Um, it's gonna be a little bit of working together with the watershed associations and our staff to kind of adjust the positions for what the need is within your watershed over the next year or so. And we also recognize that that's gonna be a moving target that may be um, really strategic planning focused in the beginning. And then in the next years to come, it may be more project management, grant implementation and that type of thing. So um, we're really open to feedback and making sure that these positions serve your guys' watersheds to the best of our ability are, again, our bottom line goal with Callie and Fianna is to increase the capacity of the watershed. So whatever we can do to help facilitate that, we are open to listening to you guys um, and open to the feedback loop. If something is working really well, we'd like to hear it. If uh, Same on the other side of the fence. If it's not working well, um, if we're tripping over each other or something is just not beneficial to the watershed, we'd really like to hear it. So we can make sure these positions serve you guys the best that they can. Yeah, and I, uh, Completely agree. And Emily, thank you for that feedback. And I think that's something too. If you shoot me an email because and tell me, me or any of the other team members, this is what our bottleneck is. This is what we are struggling with and could use help with. Chances are, if you, it's th that same thing that everybody says, if chances are, if you're struggling with it, you're not the only one. So please tell us what, what that is. And we will try to find a way to help. think to, um, because you guys are a quiet group, I'll just kind of go through some of the questions and things that we workshopped when we brought these folks on board. And one of the big questions was making sure that, or concerns was making sure that they work in tandem and in um, collaboration with CSCB's field staff. So they're not gonna overlap too much with what Garth and the good folks that the State Conservation Board are doing out in the field. Um, they're more of a collaborative and a partner to them to help facilitate some of the things that um, they're too busy to get to, or maybe just don't fall within their wheelhouse that still benefit the watershed. So 
Um, certainly, these are going to be positions that kind of fill a gap rather than overlap other folks, and that's our goal. So um, they'll be working really closely with Carissa and Garth and the um, new Cali at the State Conservation Board um, to make sure that we're all working together and we're driving initiatives forward as a group and as a collaboration. All right. Any other questions? Carissa, Garth, did you guys have any questions that come to mind? You're out in the field doing field work. Is there any anything that comes to mind for you guys? Uh, I don't have anything specific, but would you mind throwing, um, Callie and, and Faye, would you mind throwing your email or contact information into the chat for folks? That would be fantastic. Well, if anyone, if no one has any other questions for us at the moment regarding the watershed technicians, um, I just encourage you to reach out to us with any questions you might have or any feedback you have. Um, and I highly encourage that you take the survey that was provided today. That's really going to help drive our initiative forward in the next six months, um, looking at what we can do to help support you guys. So it's really important that we get your insights into that and that we're making sure we're serving everybody. That survey link will be sent out via email as well. So we'll circulate it to all the conservation districts. Um, so if we don't save it today, don't worry, we'll get it out to you. Um, I just want to give you guys a few date reminders while we're all in the same place at the same time regarding um, the fall watershed meetings. So um, resolutions are a big topic. They are due October 1st. So make sure that if you guys have resolutions, you're talking about them, getting them voted through your boards in the next month or two to make sure that they get to your watershed associations for voting and get moved on to the annual meeting and resource committees. If you have any questions about resolutions um, or you need to plan a one-on-one -on -one with me or one of the field staff to go through how to do the resolutions with your boards and things, we are happy to do that. So please just shoot me an email and we'll get a Zoom schedule to make sure we support you guys. Um, the award nominations are due October 15th. Um, same process, so make sure those are going through your, your local boards um, this month or early next month so that they're ready to go for the watershed meetings. Our resource committee meetings are scheduled remotely for the week of November 18th through the 22nd, and those will be at 6 p.m. each night, um, and you'll see a schedule get announced here in September for those for you guys. Um, and then our annual meeting is the first week of December. So. Um, just some dates out there for you guys. If you have any questions about any of that, please let me know. You will be seeing some email reminders. I did send out an email um, with some resources for resolutions and award nominations. If you didn't get that, or if you have any questions about any of that, again, just feel free to reach out to me, Callie or Fiana. We'll be happy to walk you through that stuff. Um, and with that, that's it for us, I think, unless anyone has any other questions about the technician positions. I just want to say a big thank you to Callie and Fianna, I know you guys haven't been on board very long and that was a big scary presentation to give, but um, I really appreciate the effort that they're putting in out in the watersheds and I really hope that you guys are able to connect with them um, and utilize their resources in the next few months. Abby, I might mention, or you might um, talk just a little bit about the resource committee so everybody kind of understands the process of that since that's been a little confusing in the past. Sure, yeah, thank you, Fiona, that's a good point. So the resource committee meetings um, are the, the meetings where the resolutions are voted either to the consent calendar or to the annual meeting for discussion. So they're the second or third, I guess, third leg in the resolution process. The first being your local conservation board comes up with a resolution, they vote that resolution onto the watershed. Then that resolution is presented at your watershed meeting and that gets voted on to the resource committees. Those get split up by topic. So we have five resource committees in Colorado. Um, let me just pull up what those are so I don't get them wrong. So we have a water resource committee, soil and land is the second, energy, education and outreach, and district and associ association operations. Um, and so your resolution, depending on the topic of it, will get voted into, or not voted, but sorted into one of those five resource committees. Um, and then each watershed has a representative to vote on the resource committee meetings in November. Um, and those resolutions are brought up at the resource committee meetings for deep discussion. Um, and that's where really the, the meat of the discussion on a resolution happens. So those folks go through them. Everybody is invited to attend and to participate in the resource committee meetings. And um, we encourage that feedback. 
One of the things in the past that's been a little bit confusing is if your board does submit a, res a resolution to your watershed, make sure that you have a board member come to the resource committee meeting where that resolution is being discussed. It's really vital that somebody who was a part of writing that resolution, who knows the intention behind that resolution, is there to discuss it in case questions come up. Um, the resource committee meetings are one of the big places where resolutions can be edited. So if they're trying to make edits that change the meaning or the intention behind a resolution, we want to make sure that your district is there to speak to that and make sure that the, the meat and the, the heart behind that resolution stays intact as it moves through the resolution process. So really important to have somebody at those resource committee meetings. They are virtual. Um, the voting membership is one representative voted at the watershed meeting to represent that watershed in the resource committees. So each of the five resource committees needs to have somebody voted um, from your watershed in your fall watershed meetings to be your representative and your voting member. Um, only one representative from each watershed is allowed to vote, um, and that's how those resolutions get moved either to the consent calendar or to the annual meeting for discussion. Um, consent calendar, if a resolution is voted through to a consent calendar, that means all 10 watersheds voted yes to move that resolution forward to the annual meeting. So that has to be an, a unanimous vote to move that to a consent calendar. If there's any opposing vote on a resolution, whether that be one or three, um, that goes to the annual meeting for open discussion at the business meeting there. So um, that's another place if your resolution does not get voted through to the consent calendar and is going to come up at the annual meeting for discussion, I highly encourage that you have a board member um, from your board there. Again, for that open discussion, that is another place a resolution can be edited um, is in the formal business meeting. So just making sure at those two places where things can be changed in your resolution, you have somebody there that can speak to its intent and make sure it stays intact the way that your board would like it to as it moves through the process. Um, resolutions are due to CACD on October 1st. We do have, um, a, we go through all those resolutions as we sort them to committees and make sure there's no punctuation or spelling errors. If there's either of those things or maybe um, an acronym that is not accurate or something like that, we will kick it back to your guys' boards to make those edits. CACD will not edit resolutions outside of the resource committee or the formal business committee. Um, and we will not make any content edits prior to the resource committee meetings, only punctuation spelling errors. Um, so that's another thing to keep in mind is if you get one back, that's that's why we don't wanna be making edits to anybody's resolutions as, as our organization. So um, again, the most important thing about the resource committee meetings is having representation there from your watershed. So I highly encourage making some time on your fall agendas as you guys plan your fall watershed meetings to make sure you have time to vote folks in because it is your voice as to what resolutions get moved to our policy book and get moved on to the annual meeting for discussion um, and approval. Is that clear as mud? Does anybody have any questions about that? I know resolutions can be just a really scary, overwhelming process. So um, I welcome any questions. And again, I'm happy to jump on Zoom and talk through it with anybody and try to help make it easier on you guys as you move through that. It can be an overwhelming process, but a very important one. I do have a quick question. Yes. Um, I, I think you said this, but my understanding is that it's dues paying districts that are able to present resolutions. Yes. Um, I guess the question there would be, are we able to say if my board wanted to carry a resolution from a neighboring district in our watershed who was not a dues paying member, um, is that a legal move, I guess, is what I'm asking. It would have to be your board's resolution. So you could have a discussion with another conservation district about a potential resolution topic. Um, and your board could vote that through as your board's resolution onto the resource committees. Um, if that's something you guys choose to do, but it would have to have a dues paying district's name on the resolution as it comes through the resolution process. Right. So as long as my board voted to say we have a neighboring district, they're not paying dues, but they want this resolution, my board would like to take it on. That all right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. Any other oh. questions? 
All right. Any uh, any other questions for Abby? Another thing too, if there's not any other questions for Abby, um, we all of the information we gave today was a lot to take in. Um, so I'm I want to leave you guys with two kind of bite-sized chunks, two first steps in utilizing us. Clearly, anything else at any time, ask us questions ask us for help on anything or suggestions, but kind of two bite-sized chunks to start with. One being the demonstration grants that we offer. There's a lot of money left on the table. Not all of that money is utilized. If you are interested in utilizing those demonstration grants, but you're not sure what project you wanna do or where, how how to even start with that, please let us know. That, that, that money is available for you guys um, and is a great opportunity. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, as Garth and I are working with you guys for the fall watershed meetings and you want to do more to bring in a program for those watershed meetings or field trip or, or anything like that, if you want suggestions for your agenda or things that you want to do, um, that's another thing that we can help with. So please send us, and I know that's already happened a little bit, but um, if you haven't utilized us for that yet, please send us questions or ask us for help in, in program planning for the watershed meetings. So it's two kind of more easily done first steps if you guys are overwhelmed. <laughs> Thank you for that, Callie. Uh, yeah, well, thank you all. Uh, Abby, thank you so much for, for uh, introducing the new technicians and Callie and Faye, uh, really looking forward to working with both of you. Uh, I'm sure everybody else is as well. Uh, just a reminder, we we're gonna uh, go ahead and send out um, the information that was shared in this uh, coffee hour via email. So the contact information and that sort of thing. And we're hoping to have this video posted to our YouTube uh, channel, our YouTube page pretty soon. Uh, and then just a reminder as well, with all the watershed meetings happening this month and next, we will not have a coffee hour for next month. So um, hope you guys can take advantage of that time and work on your watershed planning. So again, thank you, thanks everybody. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to any of us and we'd be happy to help. Thanks so much.